Hey folks, Tim here from Rockout Videography again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Squire 70s Jazz Bass. This one is one of the Vintage Modified Series basses with the Duncan Design pickups. They are now being offered as part of the Classic Vibe Series, one of which we also got to try out recently at one of our trips to Guitar Center. We're going to talk about the manufacturers and the features that have occurred over the years and demo a few different examples of this bass. Stick around. If you're looking for a good bass that won't break the bank, one of these may be the best Squire Jazz bass for you to get. Fender has been having basses and guitars made overseas under the Squire name since 1982. About 2003 or so, they introduced the Vintage Modified series. These instruments were designed to be like vintage instruments that had been hot-rodded or modified over the years. Let me tell you the story about this bass. In 2007, I walked into my local guitar center looking for a cheap jazz bass. I'd had a Washburn Jazz Style EBT bass that I'd sold back in 93 to buy my 62 reissue P bass. I tried out the two cheap Esquire basses they had in the store that day. I think one was about $160 and the other one was under $200. I'm not sure. That was 17 years ago, but I didn't like how either of them sounded, so I tried out the Getty Lee signature bass. I really liked the way that that bass sounded, but I didn't have the money in my budget at the time for it. The salesman recommended that I try this one, and I actually thought that it sounded better than the Getty Lee bass. I played it for a while and ended up loaning it to my friend Jay for a recording project. When I got it back a couple of years later, I put some flat wound strings on it and started playing it at an open mic jam that I was going to on Sunday nights. For years, this was the only other solid body electric bass I owned, other than my P-Bass. It's a bass I would take with me on vacation if I wanted to practice during my trip. If you watch the channel, you've seen this bass before in some of the gear demos that we've done. I've also used it live with the burn lacquers a few times over the last couple of years. It sounds great live and records well too. You can see it in some of the live videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Let's take a close look at this bass like we would in a gear review. This bass was made in the Court factory in Indonesia in 2007. We can tell by the serial number. IC stands for Indonesia Court, and the first two numbers are the year of manufacture. I'm not sure what the body of mine is made of, but I think it's probably maple. That's what the new ones are listed as being. The bridge is the standard Fender vintage type that they've been using since at least 1957. It has three chrome knobs and a chrome control plate with an input jack. There are two volume knobs and a master tone knob. The knobs are not the push-pull type that give you additional controls. Inside, you can see that they use small mini pots and some cheap wiring. This is to be expected, and it's not really a big issue to me. However, some of the wiring is the thicker cloth type insulation, and it looks like there's been some shielding paint applied to the cavity. As I said, this bass came with Duncan Design pickups. These were standard on the Squire 70s jazz basses until 2014. There are rumors I found out about why this changed, but since I couldn't find any definitive information or evidence on this, I'm not going to speculate in this video. According to the information I found online, this bass came with a Duncan Design JB101 single coil jazz bass bridge pickup and a Duncan Design JB101 single coil jazz bass neck pickup. So just what are Duncan Design pickups and who makes them? Getting details on this is challenging. Seymour Duncan has stated, quote, Duncan Design pickups are designed by Seymour Duncan and built in Korea's finest pickup workshop. Some of these pickups are modeled after current models of the USA line. Duncan Design pickups are only available as OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer, direct to guitar manufacturers who produce instruments in the $300 to $800 range. I couldn't find the secret identity of Korea's finest pickup workshop, which seems to be a phrase unique to Duncan Design since all searches for that phrase kept just leading back to that quote that I just showed you. I had thought for years that they might have been made in the same court factory that made the base since court does make their own pickups. Is the court factory in Indonesia Korea's finest pickup workshop? Who knows? Court is a Korean company. 
I think Seymour Duncan wants it to remain a mystery, so it really just comes down to this. Do you think the pickups sound good or not? I think they sound good. Moving up to the neck, you can see it has a maple fretboard with black binding, printed block inlays, and 20 narrow tall frets. This base also has the standard 34 inch scale length. The nut seems to be your standard synthetic, plastic, whatever they were calling it in 2007. The tuners are open back vintage style with clover style keys. Of all the bases I own, this one has the smallest gear ratio at 15 to one. However, I haven't really noticed any issues with it going out of tune over the years. We use this base to test our cheap tuners and it didn't really have any issues there either. Let's do a demo and I'll show you what this bass sounds like. I'm going to demo for you what my bass sounds like. If you could do me a favor real quick though, if you don't mind hitting the subscribe and like buttons, we're really close to our subscriber goal. And if you like nerdy t-shirts, we've got a bunch of different uh, unique and custom designs inside our merch store. All right, enough of that. Here's our signal chain. I'm going with an instrument cable directly into the line one input of our Zoom L8 recorder. It is set for high Z. That is going to give you just the raw sound of the bass. No effects, no EQ, no compression, nothing like that. I do have a small monitor next to me, but I'm going to probably cut off the audio from the camera microphone whenever I'm playing. So all you will get is the raw sound through this. A uh, couple of things to keep in mind. I'm playing flat wound strings, right? That sounds different than rounds. And the other thing is that, as always, you know, use good headphones or, you know, speakers or something. If you're listening on your phone, you're not really going to hear bass frequencies. Okay, here we go. First, I'm going to do both pickups, tone all the way up. All right, let me turn the tone about halfway down. Here's both pickups with the tone rolled all the way off. Okay, here it is with just the neck pickup with the tone all the way up. Here's the neck pickup, tone rolled all the way off. Okay, bridge pickup only, tone all the way up. And lastly, we're going to do the bridge pickup only with the tone rolled all the way off. All 
All right, well, there you have it. That's my vintage modified 70s jazz bass with the Duncan Design pickups. So how do the other Squire 70s jazz basses they've been making compare to mine? We were recently lucky enough to find two other versions of this bass for sale at our local guitar center. One was a used vintage modified without the Duncan Design pickups. It was made in 2016. The other one was a new classic vibe version made in China. The vintage modified version seemed to be exactly like ours, other than the pickups. Both basses had round wound strings, so keep that in mind when comparing to the flats on our bass. We played both of them through this Fender Rumble 100. There's the settings. This seems way out of tune. But this one, this one according to the serial number is one of the Indonesian ones from Core ICS serial number. 1607 so 2016 should have been made so you can see a difference right here this thing has got like ours it's got the chrome knobs whereas the the new classic vibe the chinese one has the black plastic ones this one's used it's in pretty good shape it feels pretty much the same as the other one though Sounds pretty close too. I don't think there's so it's maybe a little bit brighter than the other one was. I haven't changed the amp settings, tone volume, everything's all the way up, so The newest versions of this bass have been part of the classic vibe line since around 2020 and are made in China. They still come in natural like the ones we got our hands on as well as a classic sunburst finish. There's also a black version. All of them come with black pick guards. The classic vibe version doesn't really seem any different either except for the black plastic knobs and what looks like 23 to 1 ratio tuners if I can count correctly. I couldn't figure out what factory in China the CMHC serial number comes from, but apparently the Grand Rewards factory isn't the one making these anymore. Let us know in the comments if you have any additional information on that. So what do you think? It's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's different than ours, but it's it's still cool. So is a Squire 70s jazz bass the best bass for you to get? There are other more expensive options available from Squire, like the 40th anniversary models, and there are jazz basses with active pickups if that's your thing. You could also buy an Affinity Series or Sonic for less. My Affinity PJ bass is a good instrument. However, for me, the vintage modified and now classic Vibe Series guitars and basses hit the sweet spot for affordability and quality. We own several of these instruments now and are really happy with all of them. If you are looking for a good quality bass in the $400 to $500 range, one of these may be your best choice, especially if it's some kind of jazz bass that you want. These appear used on the internet and in music stores just about every day. So you can get one of these even cheaper, and if you want one with the Duncan Design pickups, you shouldn't have to search too long to find one. 
It also turns out that the Black Classic Vibe version is the only Squire bass currently available left-handed. So if Samuel decides to step up from his Glary bass, this is probably what he would pick. He likes our right-handed one and does play it occasionally. If you are left-handed, this may also be the bass for you, especially since options are limited. I have no plans to do any upgrades to mine. I want to keep the original Duncan design pickups, not because I think it will be collectible or worth more money stock. I just like it the way it is. And I think having these now discontinued pickups is kind of cool. If this was the only base I had, I'd be fine. It wouldn't be the only base I wanted, but honestly, I can and have practiced, gigged, and recorded with this base, so it would get the job done without any problems. Let us know in the comments if you have any experience with these Squire 70s jazz basses and what your impressions are. If you have one, what do you use it for? Everything? Or is it just one of the basses that you use, like it is with me? Do you like flats or rounds? Thanks again to everyone who supports us by watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, have a great day.